midday segments which has brought the most response this year was the cat debate and the fur it really flew when cat hater John Wormsley appeared in the studio wearing his cat skin hat and suggesting that to protect native wildlife domestic cats should be destroyed. Now we had tons of calls from outraged cat lovers who suggested that maybe you should have the same treatment for him. Well one of my next guests may have the answer to the dilemma. Trudy Strade has spent the past 18 years developing a new variety of cat specifically bred to live indoors and she's here now to tell us more about it along with our resident vet Kirsty Sexel. Hi. Hi. The big, the big argument was that um, about domestic cats getting out, not just feral cats, but domestic cats getting loose in the yard, getting out and killing birds and, and, and other native wildlife. And so that was the argument why there should be, there should be cat-free zones and things like that. Now, what do you think of that? Well, I'm an ecologist by training, and it would seem to me that it's quite impossible to actually eliminate the feral cat population the unowned domestic population, I would have thought the contribution from actual own pets is very small, especially where they're shut up at night. Mm. And we'll see, we had Sherbrooke in Victoria, they have a curfew. The cat protector van comes around and they have a curfew. You must lock your cat up by 8 o'clock at night or something like that. It seems yeah. to me perfectly reasonable. Does it? As a cat lover, you'd say yes, that? Yes, I think so, for the safety of the cat. Mm. You must think first if it's a pet, it's a part of your family, is it responsible to leave it out unattended where it can get hit by a car? Or, to, or mauled or, by a dog. Or mauled by a dog. Unfortunately, one of the hidden secrets of suburbia is how many cats are prey to people's pet dogs. Mm. And on the other hand, is it fair to have it um, going out and, well, mauling people's chooks, annoying their canaries, killing the wildlife? I agree. Yeah. Now, you went about developing this breed of indoor cats. I mean, why are these any different? Do you, I mean, do you know that they don't mind being indoors and never getting outside? <laughs> well... <laughs> How can you really say that? I do know that they'll live quite happily in and many will choose to stay inside. I live on a property, I have a lot of house pets and they really don't want to go outside. They really don't. They'd much rather be with people and that's the secret. I bred cats that are primarily attached to being with people. Is this cruel as a vet? Do you think this is cruel to, to do this? Keep, to keep, cats, keep inside? cats inside? No, not at all. I mean, they, they will adapt quite well to living inside, provided that they're given the opportunity to, to express the same kind of behaviours inside as they would outside. So well, That's what worries me, though, you see, because uh, when you, I've seen cats indoors sometimes, and what they can do to the back of, a, uh, of the fabric on a couch in next to no time, they can shred it, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, but that's probably because people haven't provided them with things like scratching posts and other toys. I mean, cats um, naturally will scratch, but if you provide it with the correct scratching post rather than the back of your couch, then there's no reason why the cat should pick your couch rather than the scratching post. And provided you've got lots of things for the cats to do inside, I mean, these little guys have got a little toy there they're playing with, um, and it's allowing them to, to hone their skills at, uh, you know, using their hands and play behaviour there, and they're quite easily amused by being inside. Mm. And also, I know when we've ever had cats as pets, we've always got two. So they've got, because they play with each other for hours until they get exhausted. They do, yes. That's really, really vital. The cat's got to be occupied. And quite often I say to people who come and they want to buy a spotted mist, I say, well, look, it's not really fair to leave it shut up inside um, from 7am to 7pm. First of all, it'll jump all over your head all night and annoy you because it wants to play with you. And secondly, it might start biting itself or wrecking the furniture or getting up and doing naughty things. For its interest, you should get yourself something else. Now, the breed you've put together here, an awful way to put it, but uh, the spotted mist, you've used, what, Abyssinians? What others have you used? Oh, well, about ha more than half was Burmese, because that was a good dose of good temperament to start with. And then there was a little, about a quarter of it Abyssinian um, for their intelligence. And the other quarter is domestic to add a bit of vigour because both those pedigree breeds came from quite small, small stocks in the first place. So a bit of the Otabi in there to help the immune system. Absolutely, that's yeah. exactly it, yes. Mm -hmm. The not getting outside, I mean, problems with their claws, do, would they not wear their claws down as much? As... Well, cats, even if they're outside, cats often have their nails trimmed. I mean, that's something we routinely do at the vet hospital anyway. Um, so whether they're inside or outside cats, you can trim their nails so that they don't have these sharp pointy bits on the end. There's no problem with that. But these would, um, obviously, even though they've been indoors and lived indoors most of the time or all their lives, the hunting instinct must still be, be there. Oh, yes. Mm. Little kittens play hunting games right from birth. What, the only thing you can do is to substitute other interests to substitute for the hunting. You can't, you can only divert it, you can't alter it. I'm sure it's inbuilt. I would say it's genetically inbuilt, the mm. need and desire to hunt. My, um, my main fear about having 
cats in, or not a fear, but annoyance having cats in apartments or locked up in doors all the time, is when you get out of bed in the morning, you head into the bathroom and there's the kitty litter tray and then it <laughs> knocks you over. Oh, there's lots of solutions to that. These days we have modern ones with lids and charcoal filters and cat flaps on them. And then, of course, you've got to change it regularly. And the third thing is, if you're prepared to pay for it, there's some very good um, non-smelly kitty litters. Actually, some that smell very clean. There's a paper product, which I think comes from the States, which smells like slightly fresh, clean swimming pool, slightly chlorinated smell. You didn't know my cats. Um, <laughs> I know you're very brave to remove the kitty litter from, from this cage before we started the segment. Oh, they'll be fine. They, I mean, they use it on the way here. I show them, of course, and they sit in their show cage all day and they don't need mm -hmm. to use it. You offer it to them, but they don't yeah. use it. I mean, they don't go to the toilet any more than you and I do, so, I mean, <laughs> there's no reason to expect That's, why they need their little yeah, tray. I survive for the 90 enough. minutes on here. <laughs> 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 that, that, that is quite true. What about, about the ones that want to go outside? Do you ever let the cats outside? Well, I do have a lot of desexed ones, retired breeding cats that are desexed. I live on a property, as I said. I let them outside all day and they're all sitting around waiting to be shut back up at night to have their dinner. And I find occasionally I do have matings and that's one of the things I'm still doing is trying to match the temperament of the sire and the dam so that we don't, I don't, two very active ones where one of the parents has shown a real tendency to want to go out, I tend to mat mate it with a more Top quiet years. one. Mm -hmm. Um, to try and select and sometimes I have ones which people will ring me up and say look there's no way I can keep it in and so we talk about what you do as an alternative. Well I know that I sound like Diana Fisher but what colours do they come in? <laughs> well they well, come those in... pink ones here and... Yes well that's a peach and that's yeah. as near as the pink cat you'll ever get mm -hmm. and then there's a blue sitting up there. This big ricky here is a brown and the one on my knee is an adult blue but they also come in chocolate, gold and lilac. So there's six oh, colours. You're a lilac cat. And how much do they cost? Around about $240. Um, and $240. That's right. Little boys come already de-sexed, though, included in that price. I have them uh, with two sets of vaccinations. 240 bucks. You wouldn't want to let them outside. <laughs> <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I think you're right. Responsible pet ownership. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Would you please thank our guests, uh, Trudeau and Kirsten. Midday after the break.